July 3rd, 1892. Dear Martha, we are in Jacksonville. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. We are here for all the festivities. Massimo and Susanna wanted to be sure the girls looked their best tomorrow. We scrubbed each elephant, filed their toenails, and painted them with lard, and mended their costumes if they needed it. Susanna said, boys, time for haircuts. I don't want you to look shabby during the parade. I remembered Daniel's hair dye. It was time to redo it or all the black part would be cut off. I said, um, Susanna, we might have a problem with Daniel's hair. She said, just tell Angelo to dye it black again after he cuts it. I said, how long have you known it was dyed? Susanna said, I'm an Italian. You can't fool an Italian. Angelo did a good job dyeing Daniel's hair black again and gave us both haircuts. This time, I really looked like a boy. I was running my hand through my hair, looking at it from side to side. Susanna said, and don't think you've got me fooled about you being a boy either. I said, did Marie tell you? She said, she didn't have to. I already told you, you can't fool an Italian. We wiped down all the cages, polished the metal trim on the elephant's costumes, and brushed up the plumes on their headdresses. This afternoon, Daniel and I went to hear John Philip Sousa's marching band. They are here for the big parade tomorrow morning for the 4th of July, and they are practicing right next to us on the fairgrounds. Daniel and Ethelbert and I sat on the grass and listened to them too. I've never seen so many different kinds of instruments. There were tiny little silver piccolos, giant tubas and timpanis, xylophones, trumpets, trombones, flutes, and every kind of drum you could imagine. The sound of all the instruments tuning filled us with excitement. I've heard the circus band tune up before, but it was nothing like this. John Philip Sousa took the field. All of the instruments came to attention. Wow, he is handsome. He wore a uniform even to practice in. When he raised his hands to direct, all of the musicians raised their instruments. When his hand with the big baton came down, they played. Tom Harrison from our circus band came to sit with us. He called out the names of the marches as they played them. The Gladiator March, Simbra Fidelis, the Washington Post, the Thunderer, the Liberty Bell, and a new march called the Bow Idol. They must call them marches because when you hear them, the music is so stirring and patriotic that you feel like marching yourself. Afterwards, Daniel and I volunteered to help them pack up their chairs and instruments. The drum band still had their drums out. Some of the men said, would you boys like to learn how to play the bass drum? We thought it was for real, but they were just playing a trick. Once we got strapped to the big drum, it was a lot bigger than we were, way too big for us to march and play. We laughed about it and were good sports, so they let us play a little while while they stood the drums on the ground. While we were playing around, guess who came over to speak to us? John Philip Sousa. I was flabbergasted. He said, boys, I need good musicians, not just now, but in the future. Here's a silver dollar for each of you. Remember me when you get good enough to join a marching band. Great buckets of butter beans. Only in my life could you scrub elephant cages in the morning and in the afternoon, meet the most famous musicians in the world. Love, Teddy. July 4th, 1892. Dear Martha, I don't know if there has ever been a 4th of July like this one. Not for me, at least. Jacksonville is filled with people, people who came to see the circus, people who came to see the fireworks display, and people who came to hear John Philip Sousa and his world famous band. This morning was the big 4th of July parade for the city of Jacksonville. Along with everyone else, our circus and the Sousa marching band marched. Sousa's band was right in front of us. Then came the ringmaster, the clowns, all the acrobats, all the animals in cages, and finally, our elephants. Susanna led the way, perched on top of Babette, followed by the rest of the elephants. Daniel and I rode on 
Denise and Saba, holding on to their collars with one hand and waving to the people with the other. Massimo walked right behind us with the babies, Lydia and Donabel. Massimo said he overheard Pete talking with Carl Ringling, and they estimate there were 10,000 people lining the streets of Jacksonville to see us. All I know is I've never seen so many faces laughing and smiling and pointing. Right after the parade, they opened the midway so folks could buy their lunches. They hired extra staff to help with the workload while we are here in Jacksonville. They were up all night making candy apples, caramel corn, popcorn, fudge, corn on the cob, hot dogs, and wagon loads of lemonade. After folks got their lunches, we started our first matinee performance. Today is a threefer, meaning there are so many people, we gave three performances. The performances are each a little shorter than they would normally be, but that's so we can get all the folks in to see the circus. This evening, when we finished, the sun was still shining. Carl Ringling invited all the performers to join in a special celebration on the beach. The beach! I have looked forward to seeing the beach since we arrived in Florida. Right near the beach, there was a railroad track set up with a steam engine and a few cars honked behind it. The mayor of Jacksonville and a few officials were standing on a platform next to the train tracks. The mayor spoke with a megaphone. Our friend, Henry Morrison Flagler, has already opened up Florida with the railroad. Today, folks can travel from Jacksonville to Daytona Beach. I am happy to announce that you, to you that he is starting a new phase of work on the tracks and soon we'll be able to travel from Jacksonville to Miami by railroad car. The cheering almost drowned out the beginning of the John Philip Sousa marching band, almost. They started up on a brand new Sousa march called the Manhattan Beach March. As the song began to play, fireworks exploded into the sky. I had never seen fireworks before. And when they first went off, I was astonished, even frightened. They looked like explosions from an invading army, but they were beautiful. They lit up the night sky, trailing lights in disappearing colors, one after the other. They burst out colors and shapes and sparkles that were almost beyond my imagination. Sousa's marching band played and played while the fireworks exploded in the sky overhead. Daniel and Ethel and I sat on the sand, eating hot dogs and drinking root beer. When the band finally started playing the Star Spangled Banner, everyone began singing. Daniel and I stood to our feet and sang too, even though we had to struggle with our words. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, Martha, I have so much to tell Mama. Love, Teddy. July 5th, 1892. Dear Martha, today was a free day. After we got our work done, we were free to walk around the town. About four o'clock, Massimo called us to his wagon. He said, I've asked Pete to have the work crew haul the water this evening, so you don't have to do it. Daniel said, that's great, but why not? Massimo said, because we're taking you out to supper. He handed us a stack of folded clothes. Susanna said you would be able to find something to wear in these. Be ready to leave in 30 minutes, eh? Daniel and I raced off to get ready. When we met to leave for supper, Susanna said, I hardly recognize you. She smiled her approval. Tonight, we want you to see the city. There won't be much time tomorrow. We roll out early. Massimo said, tonight we eat Italian. My brother Stefano owns the best restaurant in town. We rode in an elegant open buggy through the town of Jacksonville. 
It gave us a chance to see the beautiful buildings and homes. The sights were breathtaking. But the best part was we got to see the ocean again. Stefano's restaurant was built on white sand. Farther out from it, waves crashed forming a shore. As far as I could see, to the north and the south was beach. The waves rushed in, becoming only a thin foam by the time they reached my feet. I wanted my sketchbook so I could draw them. Massimo pointed. You see this big ocean? This is the Atlantic. Susanna and I crossed this ocean by ship all the way from Italy. We were three weeks sailing. I tried to look beyond the waves and picture the big vast ocean that brought Susanna and Massimo all the way from Italy. I felt very small. The world is bigger than I ever dreamed. Stefano came to greet us with embraces. Massimo introduced us as Vincelli and Gormano. Stefano instantly began speaking Italian. Massimo said, they don't speak Italian? They don't speak Italian. Stefano shook his head, disappointed. Well, then you better eat Italian. This is the best Italian food this side of Lago Mar Mar Magorio. His waiters brought out platters of food, so many we couldn't keep up with all of them. I have never tasted such delicious food. Sausages, peppers, fish, meats, cheeses, and even octopus. After the dishes were cleared away, Massimo said, Teddy, Daniel, we have something to tell you. Tomorrow the circus will leave Florida. We are headed north. I thought of Mama and Pap looking for me. Susanna said, we know you are looking for your parents, Teddy. You are welcome to stay with us for the season, but you need to know that our journey will now take us far from Florida, thousands of miles, perhaps. My heart felt very heavy. I said, I cannot go with you. I must continue to look for Mama and Pap. Susanna said, Daniel, will you stay with us? I held my breath. I knew how Daniel loved the circus. Daniel said, Teddy and I are family. Family sticks together. Thank you for your offer though. Massimo said, here is your pay and a little extra Susanna and I threw in to help you. There is enough for a train ticket to take you from Jacksonville down south of here. Perhaps you will pick up your trail of your parents. He handed me an envelope. You are always welcome with us if you, if you come back. I said, thank you. I don't know how to repay your kindness. Massimo looked at me with his kind eyes. You are nice to our girls. We are nice to you. We were all quiet as we rode in the open buggy back to the circus camp. I will miss Susanna, Massimo, and especially the elephants. Love, Teddy.